Hello and welcome to another Whiskey Review with me, the Whiskey Novice. It's a pleasure to be here with you, as always. Thank you for joining me. This is review number 81 and part two of my series looking at some independent bottlers. Now, let's try to explain this series again, just in case you missed it out in the last time. The, the idea of this series is sort of to give maybe those who are maybe a little new, a little early in their journey, uh, a little bit of a pointer towards some independent bottlers and for those who are more established those who've been around a while just to try and hit a few bottlings which may be new to you and in the essence of that this time we're looking at signatory and in particular this time the editor 10 year old until filtered i'm going to take this a little slowly now a little slower because there's an awful lot to say about this particular bottling and signatory themselves. So without further ado, let's get into that. Signatory uh, were established in Edinburgh in 1988 by brothers uh, Andrew and Brian Symington. However, it was four years before they got a license, before they were granted a license to actually bottle whiskey. So I think in that time, they were, they were gathering up casks and, and you know, getting themselves ready to get out there. There's a bit of a step forward. Things happened. But I'm not actually going to get into them yet. I'll just hang back. There'll be those out there who know the link between Signatory and Editor. But I just want to, for those who don't know, I'll hold back a moment yet. And I'll explain this individual bottle to you. For anybody who has maybe got one or is trying to get one, then you can be very specific with this. Because remember with independent bottlers, especially with Signatory, this is a single cask. This is all one cask in that I could have a bottle of this from a cask. You could have a bottle of Signatory, Edredor 10, until filtered but it'll be from a different cask. So this one was distilled on the 21st of May, 2010, bottled on the 6th of November, 2020. It is cask number 132 and bottle number 865. So if you actually happen to have the same cask and you're watching this video, then we're laughing. I'm gonna, as I say, start to maybe just break down what I get in the whiskey first before it's not a bombshell it's, you know there's those because there's those of you who know as I said the link between signatory and editor ball of 46 percent no color added would you look at the darkness of that and obviously until filtered as it is part of that series. Let's get in and break it down a little. Incredibly rich nose, incredibly rich. Old and dank smelling. It is woody. Is it wet? Is it dank? Wood? No. I don't think so. The wood's there, but it doesn't really play into that old dank smell. Unlike the official bottling from Edredor, the official 10-year-old bottling from Edredor, it's not so Christmas cake, sherried whiskey. The usual things we know and expect from a sherried whiskey. As I said, Christmas cake, the raisins, that sort of thing. Like, yet again, like the official bottling, there's still a whiny note in there, a, a slightly vinegary note. In fact, I think it may be a, almost a light soy sauce note. This is... Here's a word for you, enigmatic. This is an enigmatic whiskey. It's, 
in some ways. It's Nicolas Cage. It's Captain Beefheart. It's weird. It's, in some ways, it's batshit crazy. But, if you leave it, work with it and give it time, you will not be let down. There are cooked fruit notes. I did say that, that it's not Christmas cake, but there are cooked fruit notes. But they're either muted or just lost in the, the whole experience because there's nothing stands out as it's just so well balanced. It's savoury. I'm getting more of that wood note that I mentioned earlier and it is even a slight pine sap but it's or wood sap but it's 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 behind all that other stuff. Savory. Yet again that soy sauce thing. And I had to, well, I didn't have to, but sometimes I do involve this as novice in this one. Because there's so much going on. And it wasn't that I was struggling, but I just wanted her views on it as well. And she suggested, and I think she may be right, stewed prunes. I did say about stewed fruit earlier, or cooked fruit, stewed prunes. And then, and then she said syrup of fig. And we happened to have a bottle of syrup of fig. And uh, I couldn't disagree. Now, there's a, a cinnamony thing off syrup of fig as well, which isn't here. But certainly behind the cinnamon in the syrup of fig, yeah, there, there definitely is some of what was going on there going on here. So yeah, it's, ooh, there's a lot going on. Into the palette. Huge. Huge sweet and sour delivery. Really thick, unctuous, creamy, oily. Unlike the official bottling, bottle of 40%, which I said was thin on the palate. A lot going for it, but thin on the palate. This ain't thin on the palate. Orange, nutty. Actually, it's very nutty. Dark chocolate with a bitter edge. Sweet coffee. A good English eel. Love it or hate it, Marmite. I said before, a savoury note. This time on the palate, it's meaty. It's savoury, Marmite. Yeah. The nose offers an awful lot. The palate starts to offer even more. It just keeps on giving. The finish. Finish is actually fairly short. But it's enjoyable. Any of that bitterness that came off the nuttiness or the dark chocolate doesn't show up in the finish. And, and there's those of you who'll know, you've maybe heard me say it before, I do not like a bitter finish. It, it can put me off a whiskey very quick. And it ain't here because it's well worked round. Yeah, that some of the dark chocolate even carries through to the finish. And I said it's short, but it's incredibly clean. This is a whiskey that could very easily be off-putting. But to me, it's rather than being off-putting, it's just incredibly Moorish. I just want to keep going back to it. It's like those people I mentioned earlier 
when I said that, what I meant was weird, but you just want to go back for more. I do anyway. I'm going to add a little water, a little water. This kind of works with water. I think part of the issue is it takes very little water to turn this into the official bottling. For me, it thins quite easily. And at 46% for me, it, it played incredibly well without being watered. But we'll try a bit. The nose, as I said, sort of goes a bit like the uh, the official bottling then, where the sweetness starts to come out. It starts to become more like, the official bottling more like a sherried whiskey as you would know it. Christmas cake, fruit, you know what I mean? Mm. Little water actually. Very little in the palate. Doesn't lose anything. Doesn't lose anything. Doesn't even, you know, that was just a little drop. But it did actually open it up a little. Finish. Finish actually becomes a little longer with that touch of water. It does. I think when I did my tasting notes, I added too much water, which didn't help in that case. But here now, no, granted, that just little drop of water, that was less than half a teaspoonful, has actually caused this to open up. So to round up, I'll hit you with the one. What I was holding off on, if you didn't already know, was that signatory, those brothers, own Edredor Distillery. They purchased it from uh, Pernod Ricard in 2002. So that begs the question, why are they releasing independent bottles of their own spirit, of their own whiskey? It's not just purchased spirit, this is their own whiskey. And even at that, the only difference, well, to say the only difference between this and the official 10-year-old is that this is unchill filtered, no colour added, etc. It hasn't been toyed with the same. But the difference is almost black and white on the palette. The thinness of the official bottling just doesn't doesn't ruin it, but it certainly pulls it down in comparison to this. You tried the two beside each other. That's where they're black and white. It, for me, the question then is, why not release the official bottling at 46%? Why not make this the official bottling? Well, it's probably a finance thing. It's probably a money thing. Let's face it, they're making money out of both. So they know better than I do. I just think that this would make a better official bottling than an independent bottling if they own the distillery anyway. That's just me. That's just me. It's just an idea. Just a thought. What do I know? So, anyway, yes, 100% brilliant. Love it. Uh, it's a complete enigma of a whiskey. But a beautiful, beautiful thing. So, we'll go and do this. Black currant. Now I'm getting hints of black currant. It just keeps going. <laughs> if you like this, then try this. This was a struggle. It, honestly, it's a struggle because there's, as I, as far as I know, because what I've tasted, I can only tell you what I've tasted. I can't judge whiskies that I haven't tasted, and I can't recommend whiskies that I haven't tasted. I wouldn't recommend whiskies that I haven't tasted. So I'm going to make this easy for myself. If you've had this and you liked it, and you've had it before you had this, then try this. If you've had the official bottling of Edward or 10 year old, and you liked it, go 
to the ends of the earth to get yourself a bottle of this if you haven't already done so. Because what you'll find you liked in this is just ramped up and fattened out and just everything is so much better about this that this lacks. Lovely stuff. Lovely whiskey. Yet again, complete enigma. This just takes the best of this and makes it better. I, when I reviewed this, I recommended to you the straight from the cask version of the 10 year old. Yet again from Edredor. It was bonkers. It, it, it just, that would strip paint, beautiful stuff, but just really, really, really heavy. So aim for somewhere in between the two of them. Somewhere in between the straight from the cask and the official bottling, I think you'll probably find this. But without having to try, without... How, what would I do? What would I recommend to you? If you were new to whiskey, if you'd maybe tried a sample of this and liked it, what would I recommend to you to do? Forget what I'm recommending to you or what I recommended to you a minute ago. Forget about this. Forget about the straight from the cask. Just keep buying this instead. And you can't go wrong. I would replace this with anything, any cask, should I say, the next time around. Because I wouldn't imagine it'll be that far wrong if this is as good as it is. More savoury gravy. Maybe it's just because it looks like gravy it makes me think of that. Uh, but yeah, it, it just keeps getting better for me. Quality, absolute quality. I'll be back the next time with something, uh, something else from this series. Until then, thank you very much for joining me. It's been a pleasure, as always. Thank you very much to my patrons. Thank, th I'd love to thank them very much for their support. If you wish to join that group, the details are below. As I said, until next week, here's to your good health. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.